We are working our way through basic assumptions that we need in order to understand international trade. And till now, we have made three basic assumptions. And these are rationality and perfect knowledge. That is, economic agents are rational and have perfect knowledge. Number two, we made the assumption that we are looking at two by two by two world, two countries, two goods, and two factors of production. And the third assumption on which we are currently working is absence of money illusion. Last, in the last video, we looked at the case of one good, where this person spends all his income on one good. What does absence of money illusion means in that case. And now what we do is we move on to a too good case. And we need a too good case simply because we are working our way through the two by two by two world. And so we need to look at absence of money illusion when we are looking at two goods. So let us do that. So let us look at the two good case. Suppose John earns $5 as income and he spends his entire income on clothing and food. Suppose the price of a unit of clothing is $1 and price of a unit of food is $1. Now, what we want to do here is we want to provide an exhaustive list of consumption choices available to John given his income, which is $5, and the price of clothing and food, which is $1 a piece. And we'll continue to assume that John saves nothing or borrows nothing. So this table contains consumption choices available to John. How do we figure this out? Given his income and prices of clothing and food, focus on consumption choice A, Suppose John decides to buy no clothing. Based on income and prices, what's the max amount of food he can buy? It'll be five units of food. Now look at another consumption choice. Consumption choice B. Suppose John has decided to purchase one unit of clothing. So out of $5, he's already spent a dollar. And what he is left with is $4. And given the price of food, he can buy a max of four units of food. Look at consumption choice C. His, suppose John decides to have two units of clothing. That means he has already spent $2 on clothing out of $5. And so he's left with $3 and that he spends entirely on food. And so he can buy three units of food. And, this, and in this way, we can write down consumption choices D, E, and F. So this table, in a way, provides us with consumption choices, an exhaustive list of consumption choices available to this person given income and price. In this diagram, what I have done is I've plotted those consumption choices from the table that we have in the previous slide. And in this diagram, you have quantity of clothing on the horizontal axis and quantity of food on the vertical axis. L remember consumption choice A, that is, this person decides to buy no clothing, so he's at zero on the horizontal axis. And given his income and prices, the max amount of food he can buy will be five units. Look at another case. John decides to buy one unit of clothing. Given income and prices, what's the max amount of food he can buy? It will be four units. And in this way, what we have done is we have plotted these points, A through F, and we join them. And when we join them, we get a line. And this line is called the budget line. Now, what does this budget line indicate? It indicates the consumption choices available to John given his income and prices 
when he decides to save or borrow nothing save or borrow nothing and look at this graph in greater detail so when john is on any point on this line we know john saves nothing or borrows nothing or in other words his income equals his expenditure i'll write this in short now consider a point to the right of the budget line what does this point to the right of the budget line indicate it indicates that here john's expenditure must be greater than income given prices and income and when his expenditure is greater than income john has to borrow money borrow money so any point to the right of the budget line indicates borrowing by this person consider a point to the left of the budget line where he is buying one unit of clothing and one unit of food and given his income and prices his income is $5 and price of clothing equals price of food equals $1 so what would a point like this indicate this would indicate that is he is not spending his entire income on these two goods or in other words he is saving money so what you should remember from this diagram is any point on the budget line indicates no savings no borrowing any point to the right of the budget line like this one indicates borrowing by this person and any point to the left of the budget line indicates savings by this person so if he wants to borrow nothing what consumption choices are available to this person it will be this entire triangle in a way entire triangle these are consumption choices available to this person when he borrows nothing and lives within his means and here he could either have no savings or may we have savings so this in a way is a list of consumption choices available so here is the formal definition of a budget line and budget line is simply a collection of points representing different consumption choices available to a person given income and prices and we want the budget line to be a binding constraint that simply means this person saves nothing or borrows nothing so given nominal income and prices we are able to determine consumption choices available to this person through a budget line and in a way this budget line indicates real income just consider the following according to me a rich person will have more consumption choices relative to a person like me and or in other words what this means is this person must be earning more real income relative to me so we could define rich and poor people based on their real income or based on what is the extent of consumption choices one has a richer person will have more consumption choices as compared to not so rich a person now let us generalize all that we know about the budget line and suppose i represents your income pc is price per unit of clothing and qc is the quantity of clothing now when the price and quantity are known to you you can figure out what will be the expenditure on clothing and that will be pc times qc so there you have it and let me just bring it to the right place 
and we know similarly price of food is pf and a quantity of food is qf then pf times qf this will denote our expenditure on food now since this person is spending money entirely on food we can figure out what will be the total expenditure and the total expenditure will be pc times qc plus pf times qf we continue to assume that this person saves or borrows nothing that simply means the total expenditure must equal income and this is how i've written this equation and that is <coughs> income must equal total expenditure and what is total expenditure it is pf times qf plus pc times qc and so this is a mathematical way of representing a budget constraint now what you should remember is the following refer back to J john's example there what we had is information on income that was $5 we had in information on price of food which was $1 and information on price of clothing which was $1 again based on these financial numbers we figured out the consumption choices available to this person in terms of quantity of food and in terms of quantity of clothing and based on that we drew this budget line or in other words income and prices are known to us qf and qc we do not have an exact number what we have are different choices available to this person now look at the following suppose this person decides to buy no clothing that means the total expenditure on clothing will collapse to zero when this person buys no clothing so his entire income must be spent on consumption of food so we are just focusing on this part now so income equals pf times qf and since we have information about financial variables what we can write is quantity of food this maximum quantity of food or the intercept on the y axis will be income divided by price of food in a similar way when this person buys no food what's the max quantity of clothing this person can be can buy it will be income divided by price of clothing why price of clothing because we have quantity of clothing on the horizontal axis so we have these end points and we join these two end points and what we get is this blue colored budget line like this one blue colored budget line now based on this information we can also figure out what will be the slope of the budget line now if when you look at this diagram you know the slope will be simply qf by qc but we do not know what is the exact value of qf or qc so what we do is in place of qf the intercept on the y axis what we write is income divided by price of food so let me just write this down income divided by price of food and we divide this by the intercept on the x axis which is income divided by price of clothing we can cancel out the common terms and rearrange it and what you get finally is slope expressed in terms of prices and that will be pc divided by pf and we attach a negative sign because the budget line is downward sloping so remember this slope of a budget line is always the price of clothing on the horizontal axis divided by price of food which is on the vertical axis so this is what we can do in general terms 
So let me end this lecture and we'll look at some other budget lines in the next one. Thank you for your time.